chroma keying, or green screen as it is more commonly known, has become ubiquitous in the movie production industry. It has become so accessible, that anyone at home can create their own special effects. But chroma keying isn't just limited to the color green. In fact any background color can be used, with the caveat that, it shouldn't clash with anything in the foreground. So, I thought I would try a different color, one that is invisible to human eyes. Instead of a green, or a blue background, I decided to use infrared, and built a special camera to test out my idea. I'm going to show you how I created my infrared chroma key camera, and show you how it works. With a really basic background screen, some free software, and a computer, anyone can play with chroma keying. Even an 11 year old can have fun playing with this video editing technique, and impress their friends. Poor old Darth Vader, he really never stood a chance. The ideal chroma key background, is one that is very monochromatic. But when I measure the spectral content of my own screen, I can see that it is far from perfect. And this, makes it more difficult for the computer software to identify the background, from the foreground objects. However, chroma keying isn't a new technique, and it certainly wasn't enabled by the advent of computers. This technique has been in use since the 1950s, so let's take a quick look, at how they did this in the age of analog film processing. Back in the day, nobody did chroma keying quite like Disney. In the 1960s, they used a technique called the sodium vapor process, and it was quite literally, decades ahead of what anyone else could do at that time. This process takes advantage of, the very narrow bandwidth emission spectra, that is emitted from sodium lamps, to create an almost perfect chroma key background color. This technique was revolutionary for its time, especially given that this is what movie cameras looked like in the early 1960s. The sodium vapor process is often called, yellow screen. The sodium lamps are used to illuminate a white background screen, and white lights are used to illuminate foreground objects. A special camera was used, that split the incoming image into two separate light paths. One of these paths was then filtered to remove just the 589 nanometer sodium light. This results in a foreground image, without any background. The other light path, is filtered to allow only the 589 nanometer light to pass, this produces an image at a second camera which only has the background, and the foreground is dark. Later, in post-processing, these two captured video images are further manipulated. The background image is inverted and saturated, to create a mat, which is then used with the video of the foreground objects to produce a foreground on a transparency. At this point, any background can be added to give the final video footage. If you want to learn more about Disney's sodium vapor process, there is an excellent video by the Corridor crew, that is really worth a watch. In this video, they actually recreated this technique from scratch. Okay. Let's take a look at what infrared chroma keying involves. I use an online optical design tool, to help with the creation of this custom camera unit. I just needed some rough dimensions to allow me to start on the detailed design. Okay. So let's look at how this infrared chroma key camera actually works. The infrared background light needs a diffuse screen. After some experimentation, I figured out that back projecting this was a better option, than illuminating from the front. I used a sheet of plexiglass, covered with paper for the screen, and it turned out to be fairly effective. To illuminate the foreground, I just used white LED flashlights. 
Later, you will be able to see, that using this technique, it doesn't matter if shadows get cast onto the background screen. I bought a beam splitting plate, instead of the prism type. It was just so much cheaper than a full prism with the same aperture. In the infrared path, I added an 850 nanometer bandpass filter, to remove everything except the background illumination. It cost me less than $2 on Taobao. And then we have the webcam, in this case, a particularly crappy one. I will explain a bit more about why I have a pair of these horrible cameras, in just a moment. As this one is being used, to record the infrared background, I needed to first remove the short pass filter from the back of the lens. Next, there is another short pass filter that needs to be added, this time in the optical path of the visible light. And finally, there is another of my special crappy cams, this time to record the foreground images. Okay, it is probably time to have a short interlude, to tell the story of these shitty webcams, and why I own two of them. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, I assumed, like most people, that it would all be over, in a couple of months. So when buying some webcams, for our children's online classes, I was a bit of a cheapskate, and purchased the cheapest ones I found. Say hello, to the GoSu webcam, and perfectly shitty device, that I purchased two of, for a grand total of 7 US dollars each. The Taobao advertisement, promised high definition video, but actually delivered VGA resolution, at about fuck all frames per second. Here is their video advertisement, along with my English translation. Hello, and welcome to my video. If you are watching this, then you are a very old man. This camera, come with a really cheap box, that costs nearly 15% of the actual product, just imagine. This cheap camera has something called VGA, which was the type of camera used, before I even born. It's so cheap, that even poor grandfather can afford to buy. And it even had buttons that make it do 1990s things, like change picture color. How cool! It's amazing and it's so nice. It also have USB wire, attached to camera, so old man not lose it. And instructions is with big writing so granddad can read it. Now you can make nostalgic video, like this. Hello grandfather, look, I go back in time machine. Well, I suppose I can't complain too much. One of these horrid little webcams, was previously used in a spectrometer project and the other I used to create a night vision system, so I have definitely gotten good value from these devices. Anyway, now it is time to build and test, this infrared chroma key camera system. This was actually quite an interesting design process, it took a lot more iterations than I expected, to get something that was able to actually work. In the end I settled on a pretty simple and basic design, with the cameras stacked in the vertical axis. Everything was 3D printed, using a friend's new printer. My old FDM machines are getting really old and tired now, and there have been a lot of improvements in 3D printing over the last 10 years. I am going to engage in some shameless promotion of this Bamboo Labs printer, hopefully I can convince them to send me one in exchange. I'm not sure if it is because my old printers are degrading but this thing, totally blew my mind with how insanely good it is. I spray painted everything matte black, to cut down on light reflections. I had to spend a little time getting everything set up, the tilt angle of the cameras, was in particular, pretty troublesome. The alignments aren't perfect, but it is certainly good enough for a demonstration of this system. I noticed that my background screen, wasn't particularly efficient at passing the infrared light, you can see here, that the 850 nanometer peak, is pretty close to the level of the ambient background light. 
I used OBS Studio to capture the images from both cameras together, as a single combined image. I then used DaVinci Resolve, to post-process the foreground and background images. I am by no means an expert with this software, so feel free to tell me in the comments, of better methods to process these images into the final composite. I set everything up to get ready to start playing with my new toy. I used my audio lab as the stage, as there are no external windows. There is a lot of infrared light coming from the sun, so it is important to be working away from natural light. Here are the LED flashlights, backlighting the background screen. My special camera is about one meter away from the screen. The computer has been set up to capture the images from both cameras. So, without further ado, let's see what this thing can do. As you can see, I have created this chroma key camera, on a shoestring. I was never expecting to be able to get great results, this project was always just a proof of concept. There are some obvious alignment issues between the two cameras. I'm sure if I was more skilled with the post-processing tools, I would be able to remove this small difference in perspective. In this raw footage, you can see that there is a horrible shadow being cast onto the background screen. With traditional chroma keying, this would present a major problem. But for this infrared process, the shadow is completely removed. What you can also see is that there is a synchronization problem, between the frame rates of the cameras. I actually don't know what the frame rate of these shitty cameras actually is, it seems to change slightly, each time they are powered up. In this example, you can also see how the shadows are removed. What is also nice about this process, is the clean cut between the foreground and the background. Whilst the alignment issue, and the camera synchronization problems, are very noticeable, the fact that I can even get some kind of chroma keying to work, using these crappy cameras, gives me a lot of confidence with this technique. Another issue I have found, is with the infrared band pass filter. This isn't selective enough, and bright reflections in the foreground will cause problems for the contrast of the mat. But in general, using this infrared chroma key technique, it is possible to overcome many of the issues that exist with traditional green screen effects. What I think I have also shown, is that it doesn't have to be expensive to create the hardware. I think that I have been able to demonstrate that this technique is viable, and with more work, could be a competitive system to traditional green screen. Infrared chroma keying, does have some distinct advantages over standard green screen. For starters, it can generate crisp edges to the foreground, far better than normal chroma keying can. Secondly, this technique is immune to the lighting of the foreground, causing shadows on the background screen. And finally, there are no limitations to the colors that can be used in the foreground. But for every advantage, there is a disadvantage too. Clearly, the expense of needing a special camera would limit the adoption of this system. Infrared chroma keying is also going to be very sensitive to sunlight, which will limit the number of situations it can be used in. And finally, there is a requirement for special infrared lighting sources. These aren't so common, and so filmmakers might have to resort to custom-built lighting rigs. So whilst this technique is never going to become mainstream, there probably are some special situations, where filmmakers have some particular set of requirements, that traditional green screen cannot handle. If I were to make an upgraded version of this camera, there are a few things that I would change. The beam splitter and filters are probably fine, they would just need to be larger. But I would change the cameras. I would use a pair of 4K industrial images. 
For the infrared path, I would use a monochrome camera to maximize the resolution to infrared. For the foreground camera, this would be a color device. I would also put the cameras on adjustable optical mounts, this would help immensely with the process of alignment. I would also make sure that the cameras have synchronization inputs and outputs, to allow the frame rates to be locked. Finally, I would add a separate lens, instead of relying on the optics of a webcam. The beam splitter will divide the brightness between the two optical paths, and so being able to add a larger lens to collect more light, would be a major benefit. But in fairness, all of that would probably end up costing me around $1,000, so in reality it's probably not going to happen. Whenever I finish a project like this, and I am busy tidying everything away, I find I have somewhat mixed emotions. Obviously, there is happiness from completing a difficult project, yet this joy is also tinged with sadness from not having taken it further. So, I guess I will just file this prototype, with the rest of my finished projects. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed my little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a commercial channel, nor will it ever be, so I can say what I want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time.